I'm now joined by Westchester County Executive George Latimer. One of the hot button issues in Westchester for Westchester residents has to do with New York City and the insistence of the city going into congestion pricing. Now, the governor of New Jersey has filed suit. The Staten Island Borough President is thinking about it. Where do you come down on congestion pricing and what, how it's going to affect your residents? You know, it's a little less impactful, Marcia, for those of us in Westchester because we have three train lines that get you into New York City. And I think we have a higher percentage of residents who come into the city that use mass transit. Uh, right now, we're looking to see what the, their committee is going to come back with with exemptions and to see if those exemptions affect certain types of businesses or uses. Uh, of coming into this uh, targeted zone. I can imagine how it's much tougher in New Jersey because you're having to cross into uh, use a car to come to the city more frequently. So I think it's a factor in the suburbs, in Westchester suburbs, but it's not as big a factor as it is in Rockland and some of the other communities. What kind of exemptions would you like to see? You know, I, I think we're, we're more concerned about uh, certain businesses that have to regularly go into Manhattan, perhaps with uh, materials to drop off where it's not an option to take mass transit. Right. And we don't want their cost of business business to go sky high, which will then turn into higher prices for consumers. But uh, I'm going to let the board do its work and then we'll react to that. And hopefully we can negotiate a little bit before the final product's in place. Well, you have actually, you actually have an appointee on the board, that not the, not the, the price setting board, it's but on the, the MTA, MTA board. board. Right. So you can have some input into the MTA board. Right. Blanca Lopez, who has that position, is our uh, acting commissioner of planning. She's very smart. She's a Portchester resident, a Latina, and uh, we think she has a good sense of those priorities and where happy to have her at the table in the discussions. So another issue that's that's emanating in New York City but it's affecting people in Westchester is the idea of the migrants that are yeah. coming into New York City. Now Westchester um, has welcomed, uh, un unusually, Westchester has welcomed some of the migrants of the communities. What's your feeling about it and what they can contribute and where they might find a place to go? Well, you know, it's interesting because most of the other suburban leaders came out violently against and, and very rhetorically uh, intense about it. We viewed it as a humanitarian problem that has to have a practical managerial side of it. So our response to this was not to say stop them at the border and all these extreme measures, but rather to work with the city to try to get numbers that we could manage and, and in so doing that we could provide services that would work, such as Department of Health to make sure that there's uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, health care concern so we don't spread a disease, to make sure we have proper security so there's no crime and we've avoided that for the two months that we've had uh, asylum seekers in our county. We're running about 400 plus uh, people who are housed in Westchester right now. The bigger problem is at the border. The bigger problem is that the governor of Texas determines that he's going to send them to New York but not send them to Missouri or Kansas or other states. Uh, that's what will take the pressure off of New York City. But in the short term, those of us outside of the city, if we each do a little bit, then we can manage it and I think we can get through this. But we do need the feds to do certain things. I think Mayor Adams has been very clear. You need financial assistance. You need to be able to have these people able to work so they can contribute economically. And I've argued for a, an establishment in White Plains where we have a federal courthouse of an immigration court so we could adjudicate those cases quicker and not have people staying in a hotel for two years or whatever these outrageous amount of times are. So is it possible that you could have an immigration court open in White Plains that could really expedite? Because now the backlog is right. a year or two years before they can actually become, a, you know, get granted asylum. Right. And, and I would suspect if, uh, if, if what they're going to say is you're going to move people off the border from Texas to any place else in the country, if you have a satellite immigration court in a federal courthouse where we have in White Plains, then you're controlling the system, but you're helping it go quicker and you're doing it in the area where, where uh, migrants are housed. And I think that makes the whole situation go faster. We'll see how the feds respond. I wonder how you feel about the other county executives in the counties that surround Westchester who have been less than welcoming uh, to the migrants coming to their community. Is there anything that you could do to convince them to open up their arms and let them in? You know, I hate to say this because I don't want to approach this just from a partisan political standpoint, but I think you have to realize partisan politics is part of this. The Republican and Democratic parties have very different approaches on how to deal with immigration. And if you look at how uh, uh, Mr. Trump viewed it, let's have a big, beautiful wall and keep everybody on the other side. I think my colleagues who are Republicans feel pressure to take an extreme position that's consistent with what Mr. Trump Trump's position is. Uh, I think Democrats are, are in a different place. Obviously, we'd like the federal administration to, to come up with a more workable structure, but I think 
most of my colleagues are looking uh, at the rhetoric that indicates the worst possible case scenario and that hasn't happened we haven't seen crime and disease spread because of uh, the migrant presence in Westchester and I think it can be managed in a humane way that's that's our approach and I think it would work elsewhere some people have said that they're concerned about the families with children bringing their kids into the school system because not only will you need, do you need to teach them but you need teachers who can teach English as a second language so that they can actually reach them is that a concern and is that one of the reasons why there's been a less than welcoming embrace from some of your other fellow candidates? Right. Well it's a factor and and we've expressed to the Adams administration that the city of New York government of the city of New York controls its schools the county of Westchester Rockland County the other jurisdictions do not they have separate independent school districts and if you if you have uh, uh, asylum seekers in a motel in a particular location that particular school district may not have an ESL program sufficient to satisfy what those kids need so you really have to try the best as you can not to have school-aged children in places where you don't control the school setting so so try to direct the migrants outside of the city where they have preschool aged children and that's that's the smarter way to go and, and if we can do that then we can manage the process fine so are there any other locations in Westchester that you think might be suitable for putting more migrants as the city is having all these people right. sleeping on the street in front of the Roosevelt Hotel? Well, right now we have three locations, uh, one in Yonkers, one in Ardsley, and one in White Plains. And I know that they've had interaction with various motels and hotels to try to secure some additional places. If it winds up being a larger setting beyond what's existing there, I think it really takes the state to come in and identify some type of facility other than a hotel or a motel and I have to say we have many hotels motels that are doing very well financially and don't want to contract with the migrants because they have outside business we've got all those corporations driving got business and I think that's one of the bigger reasons why the marketplace in Westchester isn't as uh, robust but we haven't talked much about Long Island we haven't talked much about some of the other suburbs so there's speculation that you might think about running for Congress and challenging Congressman Jamal Bowman are you considering it at all well it's a hot rumor and uh, I've gotten calls you know from some individuals that want me to consider the race and so when I was asked by members of the press I answered honestly yes i had been contacted by some people I've not you know established any systematic way to assess it and right now because we're still well in advance of what the 24 cycle is going to be I'm not really focused on it but you know it's flattering I think it's a reflection of how well we've managed Westchester County government and we've been very progressive but we've also been very substantive but details at 11 is the best I can tell you well also I think that there's another hanging chat here and that is the fact that there's going to be a redistricting of the districts and when right. they're done the maps could be totally different you know giving uh, you even either more of a chance or less of a chance we don't know or your house could be in another district <clears throat> I live in a community that's that's right near the borderline if they change where the borderline is I'm not in the district so you never know what's going to happen I've been in this business quite a while I've learned to expect the unexpected but are you at all tempted by I mean you know you're term limited in yes. 2025 yeah. So are you at all tempted to try, you know, something else? Well, I'm at that classic age, Marsha. You're not there yet, but I'm at that classic age <laughs> where you have to figure out what comes next. And so uh, if, if, uh, if a job with the New York Mets to straighten the team out comes next, I'll take it. You know, if that doesn't come along, I'll look at my next best option. We have 15 seconds left. Would you really go to the Mets? Uh, well, I'm a Met fan. So. <laughs> I know my Yankee friends are going to be upset with me. Okay, well, we're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.